Okay, it is time for a long Herverdew review. Today I want to talk about the Daiwa Silver Creek Stream Custom. There's a couple other letters in there too, I think. But for anybody who thinks I'm, you know, just not a Daiwa fan, that I, you know, I hate on Daiwa, that, you know, because I, I, I talk about how much I love my Shimano Aldebaran. I got this reel literally the same day that I got the Aldebaran. I, when I, I reached out to Japan Lore Shop and Digitaka back in the spring, both of these were sold out. So I sent emails to them and I said, hey, can I get one of these? And Japan Lore Shop came through on this and Digitaka had the Aldebaran. So I just, I just bought them both. They were a little bit pricier then. I'm assuming that if they're still available, I haven't checked the stock that these are gonna be well under $300 now. Back in the spring, they were around 350. So I think this is probably like $275 reel now. I bought this specifically thinking I was gonna use it for trout. I, I paired it with the Major Craft fine tail glass rod. Those two were matched up. They're a beautiful combo together. And honestly, they performed flawlessly. This reel is one of the reels that just disappears for me. It's very rare that I, that I find myself fiddling with this. It casts just about everything from a, a wide range of weights. And it's not just a trout reel. It's really focused on smaller bodies of water. I have used it uh, on the Ohio River. I've used it on a lake a little bit just to see how it did. But it was on a short rod as well. Uh, I think that rod's maybe five foot four. So it's, it's not a, a really long rod to begin with. It might even be four foot 10. I don't have it set up for casting long distances. But I tell you what, this thing is accurate. It is smooth. Uh, the drag is is really nice. It feels good. I love the sort of retro look with the the brown and the gold. Uh, the, the cork knobs, I think they're cork. Actually, now I look closer. I think they're actually plastic knobs made to look like cork. But it, I don't know what kind of material this is. But it's it's almost got a little bit of a softness to it, right? It's not this. It's not the hard plastic. The the finish has been great. I'm actually looking to see if I can see any dings. This has been through a ton. I mean, it's it's been all over the place, and I, there's hardly a mark on it. This thing has held up extremely well. Uh, I'm actually impressed. The the Aldebaran has some visible marks on it, you know, but this one has been fished at least as much, if not more. And again, a lot of that was in rocky streams, and you know, it's really during trout season I was I was fishing a lot of this. I fished it a lot in May too, and honestly, I don't think I have fished it since May, just because I've been working through some other stuff. Uh, and that's why it's not on a rod. Actually, I put the Dark Wolf Ultra on that that glass rod just to see how that would work out, and you know, as expected, it worked out really well. You know, that particular rod I, I absolutely love. But this is a reel that, at least right now, I have no intentions on putting it on another rod. It suits the purpose that I wanted it for so well that I, I'm just, I'm gonna keep it together. Some people like to just experiment around. I look for the right rod and reel combos that serve the purpose that I want them to serve. I'm not really always trying to say like, oh, well, how, do, how does this mix, mix and match? I talk a lot about wanting things to look well together. The Silver Creek on that major craft rod, it looks nice in my opinion. Uh, they've both got that brown and gold feel going on. You know, so I bought this as a trout reel, you know, a stream reel, it was very specific. But when I started going through and looking at the trips that I used that on, you know, I realized that that reel caught my biggest rainbow of the year, uh, personal best rainbow actually, uh, was, was on that rod back in May. In April, I was fishing it because I wanted to see how that, that combo held up to bass. And so it was one of the first trips that I took that rod on targeting bass. I actually caught my personal best largemouth. And so, uh, you know, th this thing is, has landed some big fish, I, you know, at least for me. I mean, it's, you know, that, that largemouth was around 22 inches. Uh, and, you know, and it was a battle. That was a big fish in fast flowing water. And that rod and reel handled it just fine. In fact, in fact, that fish pulled out so much drag that it actually ended up twice as far away from me as it was when I hooked it. Uh, it was so far away when it first jumped that I couldn't tell what it was. I, so that rod has definitely handled some big fish. And then the, the rainbow, I, I thought it was maybe smallmouth or something, and I realized they were trout. And I thought these were wild browns and ended up being, you know, uh, this, this huge rainbow. Yeah, the, the rod has done extremely well. The drag is very smooth. In fact, when I when I was doing my Aldebaran review, I wanted to, to get 
uh, some clips of, of how how the drag sounded and so I went to my original the the, the first evil eye bass video because I thought that was caught on the Audubaron turns out that was also on the Silver Creek so this reel has done amazing work it's caught uh, a lot of fish the same day that I caught the big rainbow I got into a hole where I caught like 10 or 12 trout just one after another uh, and it was just pretty close to precision casting it's just trying to hit each little spot along the way uh, and that reel even when I was you know sort of a little amped up because I was catching so many fish that reel was able to, to put it in places you know so it's a very accurate casting reel hardly any thoughts now when I was trying to cast it down to around one gram I, I know at one point I was I was using some some very light I think 132nd ounce jig heads um, with the small swim baits from Euro tackle it struggled a little bit there it didn't give me really long distance now that's partly the rod the rod is rated a little bit heavier I don't know if I need to, to stretch down past there because I've got a couple other setups that will do very light presentations pretty well again its intended purpose was when I'm fishing the trophy trout areas when I'm fishing some of these streams that have pretty fast flowing water but also have the potential for 20 plus inch trout and maybe the occasional smallmouth. can I find a setup that lets me do that uh, and I, I wanted the glass I, I like the way glass feels for certain setups for me with trout the the glass or a moderate action rod it works a little bit slower uh, I tend to miss a lot of trout already and so if I can get a rod that's got a little bit slower bend and, and helps me maybe not react quite as fast because I use braid and so there's not really any stretch in my line I, I re rely on the rod to do that for me now I gotta tell you if it wasn't for this reel if my only experience with with dia was the alphas air I, I might have been done uh, because that reel was supposed to be so good and it's just compared to everything else on the market that I've tried it's just it doesn't hold up it's not it's really not that great in in so many different ways but quite frankly pretty much for all the reasons I didn't like the alphas air uh, I love this it's got a very similar braking system it's not exactly the same the office air has a moving rotor as I understand it this is a fixed rotor but it dials in it, it's still dialed in really well so far the Daiwa products that you know getting them dialed in seems to be easiest for me what else do we want to talk about on this feels good looks good catches big fish catches small fish I you know I don't know what else to say I if you do a lot of stream fishing and you're looking for something that casts shorter distances a little bit more reliably and that's probably the other thing when I fish some of my other reels when I'm trying to get real pinpoint you know dis distances or pinpoint casting on shorter distances you know like maybe 20 to 25 feet or and under I feel like every once in a while the other reels they, they they sort of you get this unexpected long cast and so you end up in the bank or in the trees I don't recall really doing that I mean I, I made some bad casts and that was just me it sort of feels like this Silver Creek is a little bit more controlled and so I can very repeatably cast it uh, in tight lo locations consistently the the Dark Wolf Ultra especially on the, the you know the limmer and wind shadow with a little flick rod I mean it can it can send the, the lure a long distance on, in a very short area but same thing sometimes you overshoot sometimes it's a little short where with the the Silver Creek again because it's designed it's purpose built for these small stream fishing it's not built for long casting it's built for for short accurate casting I think it, it lives up to that hype part of why I haven't fished it as much this summer is that I'm fishing a little bit bigger water in the summer the smaller streams sort of slow down and dry up a little bit uh, so it's been a little bit more rakes lakes and bigger streams and rivers but like I said I've also been trying out some other stuff but I guarantee you come fall when I start targeting more more trout again you know, that's going to be one of my go-to's and I get one or two other setups that I'm playing around with right now but there will be plenty of times when if I know I'm going for big fish and I know it's fast moving water and I know it's fairly tight this is it this is the reel it would be a good all-arounder like I said I've caught my biggest quite frankly my biggest bass of the year but my biggest largemouth ever and my largest trout this year came on the came on this reel uh, so it, it wouldn't be that bad of a thing but I just feel like it doesn't give me the that extra 10 20 30 feet even at times uh, that some of the other reels give me when I'm fishing bigger bodies of water so it, it just that's that would prevent it from being an all-rounder because I fish a lot of different types of water but if all you fish is streams and creeks this is probably all you need 
So it took me five months to record this and I'm sorry about that. I like to make sure that when I give you a review, it's based on what I've experienced and comparison to other stuff. And I just try to give you some examples and that's why I have all the clips in here. And I'm, I'm not really worried about giving you a ton of product beauty shots and all that stuff. Um, it's great that they look nice. It's great that it feels nice. Um, feeling nice is important, but the, the bottom line is I, it helped me catch a lot of really nice fish this year. So I expect it to do that over the next year as well. So with that, if you have any other questions about it, let me know. Uh, I've got a link to either Japan Lure Shop or Digitaka. Those are the two most likely places to find it that I like to shop at. Um, but it is one that has been in and out of availability. So, you know, be patient. It's worth tracking it down. Uh, and with that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.